In this video, learn the exit strategy that the pros on our trading desk are taking. It might surprise you. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafiori, co-founder of s and Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. In this video, we teach a developing trader during an in-depth trade review the benefits of an exit strategy our top performing traders are taking. Let's get to work on sharing this important exit strategy so you can grow your trading account. Hey, Brandon, uh, tell us what your role presently is at the firm. Yeah, so I just finished up the summer internship. Um, I went from about June to early August, finished that up, and now doing school and going part-time with you guys. You finished up your junior internship? Yes, my junior internship. All right, great. And so now you are in a senior internship. Correct. I'm starting my senior internship, yes. yes. Okay. And you're doing that remotely? Yes, I'm doing that remotely. Where are you broadcasting from? West Hartford, Connecticut. I, I know that place very well. <laughs> um, you went to school around here, I believe. Yeah, I lived in West Hartford for two years. I went to, I went to UConn Law School, and, which is in Hartford. And obviously right next to Hartford is West Hartford. Yeah. And uh, I can picture it in my head right now. Yeah, it's, it's great here. I have a lot of friends that go to UConn. They enjoy it. And where are you going to school? University, University of Hartford. Hartford. Why, don't you, uh, why don't you start and run through this? Uh, but I just wanted to provide some context for those who are listening as to where you are at it, where you are at at your stage uh, in your trading development. Yeah, so this is an archived playbook trade. It is a triple earnings beat, 8% gap up. The stock was AMBA. So the trade strategy, so for this trade, the entry criteria is a triple earnings beat. So beat in EPS, revenue, and raised guidance. The market cap of the trade I'm taking, the stock has to be over $2 billion in market cap. Price is over $10. Pre-market volume is over $1,000. Three-month average volume is over $100,000. And the gap up is over 8%. And the stock is opening in the top 75% of its pre-market range. Oh, what are you saying right there, you want to apply this to large cap stocks? Yeah, so looking at my statistics, I, I found that personally I trade mid cap and large cap stocks best. So that's why I have this market cap and price criteria. Um, and then the pre market volume criteria is just to make sure that the stock is completely liquid pre market. And then three month average volume, 100,000, nothing significant. But what I found with these triple earnings beats is if you're trading a stock that has an average volume of 100,000 to 200,000, they can easily do about 800,000 to a million on the day of the triple earnings beat. So 100,000 volume is, I found to be an appropriate criteria to use. 100,000 shares a day? So I found for the three month average volume that if you have 100,000 shares a day as the average volume on triple earning beats, on the successful ones, you can have about 800,000 to a thousand or a million shares traded on the day. About 800% to a thousand R ball. Look, I'll give you a tip. I, I think you need to, I'd be surprised if um, you, you didn't do better for stocks that had an average daily volume above a million, mm -hmm. how a stock is gonna trade if it has an average daily volume above a million is gonna be very different than a stock that has an average daily volume of 100,000. That's not a lot. You know, something, and we used to teach this in the past that if you didn't have an average daily volume over 800,000, that that would be something to pass on as a developing trader. So there's a very large distinction between how something's gonna trade if it had an average daily volume of 100,000 shares, even 200,000 shares, even 300,000 shares, than something that is gonna have over 800,000 shares for its average daily volume on a day. And I understand that on a day of earnings, those numbers are going to go up. And it certainly could be true that on a day of earnings that something with less than 800,000 shares could be something that you'd be able to trade, whereas maybe on a prior day you'd, it wouldn't be liquid enough for you to trade. But I, I, would, I would imagine if you go back and break down your trading for the strategy that you're going to see a difference 
between 100 to 300,000 shares average daily volume, and that over 800, even a million average daily volume. Okay. Yeah, I, that's something I can look at. I've kept a, I keep a database of these triple earnings beats. So deciphering the different stocks and how they trade on their average volume is something that I can look at. My intuition is you're going to trade the ones with over a million better, but the reverse of that may be true for you. Um, you're going to, uh, man, I, we could spend a lot of time talking about the difference between stocks that trade less than 300,000 shares average daily volume and those that trade over a million average daily volume. I mean, there's just a whole different way you would attack stocks like that. There would, you might pass on a certain threshold uh, for stocks. So, so take a look at that. Um, I, I really do like the fact that you know based on looking at your stats, that you trade mid caps and large caps better for this strategy. I heard that correctly, right? Yes, correct. And how'd you, how'd you figure that out? Through trader view. So I've just been, in, after like months and months of importing my um, daily trades daily, um, just looking at the statistics and the market cap and price I trade best, um, anything over about a 2 billion market cap, I trade better than anything under. Good, well done. Thank you. So variables for the trade. So again, like I was saying, I keep a database of these triple earnings beats and going back to the most successful instances, these are all common patterns that these trades um, display. So these are the daily behaviors. So basically out of these daily behaviors, if the stock is displaying one of these, at least one of them, then the trade is gonna be valid. But three out of five last days were read before reporting earnings, gapping up above daily or weekly resistance opening above a new five month high, gapping above tight three day or more consolidation. And what I identify as a type consolidation is less than two ATRs. Closed previous day, more than 45% below 52 week high, and then gapping up above all time highs. If you wanna learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So fundamental behaviors going into the trade. I want to see tier one bank price target upgrades going into the day. And then a surprise element like a cash dividend introduction um, or a beaten EPS in revenue or sales by a significant amount. When I was reading this prior to our discussion, I didn't understand why you put in three out of five of the last days were read before reporting earnings. Keeping a database of these, I found that to be a common pattern. I think it might be more of like a surprise element where institutions may not be expecting an earnings beat or a really good earnings. So the stock may be selling off a little bit before earnings over the past five or so days. That doesn't necessarily tell you that it had been selling off. I mean, first of all, one of the days could be up 10% and three of the days could be down a half a percent and the other day could be flat and the stock could have been up eight and a half percent. So the, the fact that it's red three out of the last five days doesn't really tell you that. Yeah. And then going into this, I used a bit of my discretion as well. So if I saw something like that, then I would probably pass on that. But I can definitely specify that in this um, in this text. Yeah, I, I didn't know what you were doing there. Yeah. Um, but I just really just looking back at the instances, I found that to be a common pattern that a lot of the trending triple earnings beats going into the day. I found that in the, the recent over the past five days, three or more of the days were red. That's just something I picked up on. Okay. So for entry positioning, feel or size, so less than 25% of position if stock fits criteria and is trading as expected off the open before confirmation. So interest, second entry, trade is developing, good prices offered by pullbacks, starting to see checks in my favor. And then the third entry majority, which is the most important entry, point of confirmation and playbook technical setup presents itself. So for sale positioning, driver's seat is the first sale. So risk off, want to take off size. 
psychologically easier for me to take off size early on. So I can do this by putting on bigger size to begin with. Pay myself is the second sale. So if stock is acting odd or market is acting weird, tape showing weakness, breaking below moving averages, any other pay myself reasons to sell or hit. Um, third sales majority, price targets were hit, have them set before entering each trade. And then extra, which is the fourth sale and overshoot sales, extra runners. So if the stock has broken past the majority price targets and it's still trending, then I can take extra sales. So reasons to sell. So for my pay myself reasons to sell, if tape is showing weakness, two minute close below the nine EMA, indices starting to show weakness, um, drops VWAP after volatility, volatility settles down and plus one standard deviation band above VWAP is hit. These are all um, valid reasons why I'll take off some size and then majority reasons to sell. So 3.07 to 4.16 ATR is hit from opening price, fails to hold key levels under 3.07 to 4.16 ATRs and then breaks below low of day, stop out. So I got this price target um, of the ATRs by taking the upside, the average upside ATR of each successful instance of these triple earnings beats that I've been keeping in a database. Um, and I take the average of the upside ATR on these. Um, and that's how I got that price target. So this is a really important trading principle, paying yourself with your reasons to sell, paying yourself as you're going along as a trader. I get often asked internally and externally uh, from traders, super common thing traders are working on, super common. Get it all the time. I'm in a trade. I was right on the trade. I made money on the trade, but I need to make more in this trade. I'm making money as a trader. I need to make more. You know, I am showing some consistency as a trader. I need to make more. I'm not showing consistency as a trader, but I have some good trades and I'm not making enough in those good trades. I'm losing as a trader, but I still have some good trades and I need to make more with my best trades the times I'm really right. I have ideas, they work, I have price targets, they're right on some of my trades and I'm not holding to target. I'm not holding enough for a big enough move. I'm, I'm getting out too early, I'm not making enough. I hear that time and time again. Developing traders, failing traders, struggling traders, guys who wanna make more, even guys who do well and almost to a trader, the, the fix that they want me to help them with is how do they hold the stock for the entire move? Stock goes from 60 to 65. The first instinct for them is, hey, Bella, how do you get me? How do you help me hold the stock from 60 to 65? That's how I make more money. I've got to hold it for the whole move. That's the only way that I can make more money. That's the, the first thing they think about. That's, those are their instincts. That's what they want me to actually help them fix. And I just can tell you from my seat, and my seat is we observe traders doing really well in markets and share that with the trading community and we share that with you. We are a conveyor of information. We get to see the active traders and swing traders who are having lots of success, and there are commonalities amongst them. And one of the commonalities amongst these successful traders is that they are paying themselves as the stock is moving to target. They are not trying to hold for the entire move to make more money. That is not what they're, they're trying to do. This is a big misconception in the trading community. They're not doing that. They are instead paying themselves along the way. And when you pay yourself along the way, that improves your trading confidence. It improves your trading psychology because you're not as nervous that you actually have to hold the thing for the entire move. 
when something goes from 60 to 65, it doesn't go straight from 60 to 65. It has periods where it looks like the stock may not work and holding something from 60 to 65 can be hard or 60 to 75 or whatever your time frame is. There are periods where it's really hard. There are periods where it's really stressful even when the trade works out. It's too hard for almost all of the traders to have to hold something for the entire move. It's too hard. It's too psychologically taxing. It breeds inconsistency in your trading. If you have to hold something for the entire move to be right, there's going to be times where you know, it went 80% to target, turned around, went all the way down, and you lost money on the trade, or you broke even on the trade, and you wiped out all of that money 80% into the trade. You're not as consistent, and being less consistent is hard. It's hard psychologically. And there's actually a more logical fix to making more money when you're right on position, and it is exactly what you're saying here. I have a couple of things to say about your reasons to sell here and some ideas where you can be more specific and add some things to take some profits. That, that, we'll talk about that as you develop as a trader, and it, I don't think it's hugely important here. But I highly encourage you to keep doing this. I highly encourage you to keep working on your reasons to sell. I highly encourage you to keep paying yourself into moves because the simple fix doesn't have to be holding for the, for the real move. It's just be bigger at the start of your position. Learn to be bigger at the start of a trade like this. Learn to risk more at the start of a trade like this. Learn to add quickly into when you are right in a trade like this and pay yourself along the way. And you're going to make more money doing that. You're going to be more consistent. It's going to be e easier psychologically for you to trade. You're going to have more confidence with your trading. You're not going to have the drawdowns that other traders have. You're going to be able to trade bigger as it is because you're going to start bigger. This is a better way to trade. And I say that because I see the results of traders internally and some externally. And we get a chance to talk to them. Those guys are having a lot of success doing this. And we implore people during our monthly meetings to keep doing stuff like this. It's a commonality amongst the guys who are doing the best, paying yourself along the way. Okay, so good job here. And I will circle back with a couple more reasons to sell for paying yourself along the way. But great best practice for all traders. So technical analysis, this is the bigger picture of a SPY. S&P 500 index of the overall market. It's been very strong. About two weeks ago, we had a slight pullback that got bought up and now trading at all time highs. So daily technicals on AMBA, you can see right here, and this is what I really wanna point out is this daily resistance that we were gapping above right here, coming in right above 100, is coming in around 104. Um, and then really just trended higher for the whole day. Thirty-minute technicals. You can see reported earnings had a pop, sold off after hours, got bought back up on pre-market session, and really opened at the highs of its pre-market session. And then this is um, intraday technicals. Um, really strong opening drive. This was about a two ATR move, pulled back to VWAP a bit, um, and chopped around, but really held VWAP all day. So intraday fundamentals. So the day the daily volume was four million one hundred fifty five thousand five hundred ninety three. Average volume is two hundred thirty eight thousand seven hundred twenty three. Our vol done on the day was one thousand seven hundred forty one percent. Made a four point six eight ATR move. Short float was three point six seven percent. Institutional ownership was eighty two point ten percent. Insider ownership was four point nine percent. Can you guys add what the VIX? was to your playbooks, mm -hmm. you know, what was the VIX on this day? You want to be keeping track of that in your playbook trade. Was VIX 25? Was VIX 12? You know, what, what is the overall volatility of the marketplace? That's going to matter as to certain trades and whether or not they're going to work or not. And I want you tracking that. 
So add to intraday fundamentals what the overall VIX was on a trading day. So trade management. So feeler size, I added some size pre-market around 9.15 a.m. It doesn't show that on trader view, but I added the majority of my size on the breakout of pre-market highs. Um, driver seat, so I covered a risk into a one in 1.5 ATR move in one minute, which was a really significant move. Um, I added size on the retest of VWAP with buyers stepping in on the tape. Let's start with your first execution. Where's your first execution? So it was pre-market session at 9.15. And what made you get in then? When I, if I remember correctly, we were pulling back into um, some pre-market support with buyers stepping in. So I added about 20% of the size I wanted and I offered a really good risk to reward opportunity. Okay, so 20% in when you're seeing pre-market support for something that is gapping up. You're going to have to make sure how much volume was done in the pre-market at that time. I would say it was less than, I would say, like 25,000. Yeah, you can't buy. You got to have real support in the pre-market to be buying that. You need to be actually looking at a chart and seeing that there's a bunch of volume that was being done because liquidity is an issue. Um, it's you need more you need more trading to be done to be buying support and pre-market. And then what's your second execution? So it was a breakout of pre-market highs where I added the majority of my size. And what was the volume done there at that time? Yeah, that was definitely it was the most significant amount of volume done. Um, it was probably it was over like a hundred thousand. Yeah, still not enough. What's the average daily volume in the stock again? So the average daily was 230,000. It did like 4.2 million on the day. So pre-market trading is, is hard. You're going to need, you would have needed more time to be going by in the pre-market. You would have needed to see a lot of volume being done. I mean, the only way those two first trades are going to work is if you have a news edge. The, the only way for that to work is if you have developed a system where you've, you've dissected the news after the earnings and you just, ha you just know this is gonna, tr you know there's a statistical likelihood this is gonna trade higher based on that. Do you, th do you think you have that? So with this, I didn't have a specific statistical news edge, no, besides the triple earnings beat, which I've been tracking and I've been keeping records of like the daily database. Those trades aren't, aren't good. Uh, what else you got? What, what's your next trade? So driver's seat, I ended up covering risk and taking profits into a one in 1.5 ATR move, which was done in about one minute. Yeah, I mean, I like you focusing on after this opens and pulls in and, and holds VWAP. That's a, that's a better trade. I would like for you to take this strategy and apply it to something that has a higher daily, average daily volume. I'm open to you telling me that you found edge in something that has less than a million to 800,000 in average daily volume. It's just that when you trade stocks that only have a couple hundred thousand shares of average daily volume, normally the spreads are going to be wider. The necessity to uh, enter at the right price is going to be more pronounced. Uh, the exit is going to have to be more timely. Your margin of error overall is going to be a lot smaller because the liquidity is just not going to be as good. For somebody who's developing as a trader, man, that's you want to be in, in you want to be in stocks that have a higher margin of error, not less. And so, you know, absent you telling me that you, you have some sort of statistical edge that's going to go higher or news edge that's going to go higher, I'd, I'd like for you to wait till price starts to confirm, volume and price start to confirm that this is going to go higher based on the stuff that we teach you guys before you're putting risk on. Because, look, this trade happened to go up and it happened to work, but it 
could have done the exact opposite and then traded higher. It could have just, or it could have just done the opposite because people are already long enough this idea and they don't want to buy it higher today. And that first move could have been five points down. And would you have been able to get out? So those are things to be thinking about. That's a great point. So yeah, so after I added that VWAP, um, once we failed to break high day multiple times and the tape started get, getting heavy, heavy on the asks, I started taking off size into high of day tests up here. Yeah, those are good exits. Those are good, those are good reasons to exit. Tape's heavy. And just and going into the day too, this was more of an opening drive trade I was taking too. I um, mean, that was the idea behind this trade. So once we failed to break high of day multiple times, I decided to take off risk into retests. And then again, once we failed to break high of day again, and then we actually created a lower low, lower low over here from the support held, um, I exited the rest of my position as it wasn't moving as quick as I wanted to. And after looking at the previous charts of these triple earning beats, by now they usually would break out of this opening range here. Good, I love that. I love how you're looking at charts of similar type trades, excellent. Thank you. I like your exit there again, lower high. And look, you don't have to, you're not exiting out of all of this when it's heavy on the tape or you're showing some resistance, you're starting to exit some of it. And then, you know, maybe the lower high is more of it. And then maybe all of it is below VWAP. You can, you can piece out of this, but good. There's a lot of things you're doing right there. Thank you. So market opens here. Once we break above, once offers lift 117, I add the majority of my size. Once we hit 120, we did about, uh, about one and a half ATR moves. Now and we're above 121. This is where I take off size. And at this point, we've almost done um, a two ATR move now. And these, um, these red lines up here are 124.76 and then 127.5. Those are my two price targets I had. And I still, this is the last offer I put up. And that was hit. So as you can see at 122 as well, there's just about, just some good size there, about 1,800 shares there. Small note, uh, offers are taken, bids are hit. Okay. So trading at 123s right now. And if we, I can skip forward a few minutes over. And this is going to be where we retest a view up. I mean, around 9.34. So at 9.34.37 in about 20 seconds. So stalling out right here above 120.50s. A bit it's hit there. And right here, the tape obviously clear change of character from open. It slowed down a lot. And on 121, there's some size there. And if you skip forward just a few minutes. It's 937.56, so about 20 seconds. This is the retest of VWAP right here. Is there something you're seeing from the tape that you you could use to get in? Yeah, so on this retest of VWAP right here, when we see the below 120, we immediately reclaimed, and then we had a wall of bids. We got 12008 that I saw. Good. Yeah, that could be a reason. Yeah, and then yeah, my bid got hit there. And this whole time on this, I was risking this um, if it held below 118.9 here, which was coming in. Good. 
Yeah, good. That's a good. That's a good signal. And not that big of a of a stop in a hundred twenty dollars stock. So that's good. Good use of the tape. Good job breaking that down. Thank you. Trade review. Overall, I would say this was an A minus setup. So I'm happy with my stock selectivity on this trade. There were a few different stocks I was watching, but AMBA is the one big trade I took on the day, and it's the one that- Yeah, I'll just challenge out. you whether or not you want to be trading a stock that has such a small average daily volume. I'll let you think about that okay. and circle back as to whether you should do that. I mean, it certainly had a news catalyst in it. It, it did. Whether or not you should exclude it based on not enough average daily volume is something that I want you to be thinking about. Yeah, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at all these instances and I'm, I want to see how they react. It may be that they trade fine. I just will say to you that if you go back and you think you can develop some edge there, that you're going to have to enter way better in, in a stock with lower average val daily volume and you're going to have to get the hell out and it's going to be harder to get the hell out in a stock like that. And you're going to have trades where you see slippage that you don't in other trades. You're, 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 there's going to be some chunkiness in your profitability. You're, you're going to take some losses that are that are higher in, in trades with this lower average daily volume than stocks that have higher volume because you're just not you're not going to be able to get out. And, and there's there's a psychology to that as well. Some people don't like that. They're, they do well, they do well, they do well, and then oh whoa, this this loss I just took because I couldn't get out comes out of nowhere and really eat uh, ate into some of the profits I take in trades like this, and some people don't like that. So think about that. No, it, it is a great point, and it is something that I'm definitely going to think about and I want to look at. Um, and really, I can go back on trade review and see the average volume of each um, yeah. stock good. I trade. There's a statistic good, good. for that. Good, good, so, good. Excellent. Thank you. So yeah, there were a few different stocks I was watching, but going into September, limiting the amount of trades I take per day is one of my main goals. So I'm happy I made this one of the two trades I took on the day. Execution, I'm happy with how I put on size on pre-market and my ads on retest of VWAP, which you mentioned on the volume pre-market. And if it isn't significant, that's also a great point and something I can look back on. And I'm unhappy that you made any of those trades pre-market. Yeah, I, I'm going to go back and look at the volume. That's something to note. I'm pleased with how I recognize that there were there was a lot of supply at high of day. Sizing was a bit smaller than it, than it should have been or could have been, so that could have been something better. But like we mentioned, with the low average daily volume, that's something to think about and include in the sizing as well. Um, and then I thought I could have gotten bigger on the initial breakout of pre-market highs, but besides that, I was pleased with the execution. No way your sizing was not too small. No way you could have been bigger based on the breakout you described from, from the pre-market. You need way more... You, know, you need a way bigger resistance level pre-market and way more volume pre-market to be putting on more size with that. That's, uh, I'm gonna, yeah. it, that, that's not even something I'm gonna let you actually go back and test or, or do. Like that's just no, that's a no. And, but your, ex, your, your exits were terrific. Your exits are really strong. And I think that's hard in a stock like that. So good job there. All right, a lot, a lot of good in this trade, some things to be thinking about and some things to not do ever again. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.